For Crema Media's Polity, I'm Shannon DeRayhove. Mobile entrepreneur Alan Knott Craig and author Gus Silver join me to discuss their new book, Mobinomics. You state that your book, Mobinomics, is a compelling and insightful journey into the new economy of mobile. How is it connecting people and changing their lives? I think the book's mostly about mix it. And um, I guess I guess the insights that I've had since we've kind of had the run of the place were that um, you know something like Mixit like totally changes the life of people, especially youngsters and especially people in low income communities, because it's a way for them to communicate with the outside world. Firstly, virtually for free, so it's not a cost issue. But secondly, um, like there's this whole uh, this escape kind of angle, you know, it kind of gives people a way of entertaining themselves and getting out of their daily reality. And, and then lastly, I mean, uh, you know, some of the most amazing things we've seen are around how people use Mixit for extra maths lessons or for drug and alcohol counselling or t early teenage pregnancies or, you know, that kind of thing where, where the anonymity and the privacy that is afforded by, you know, a, mo a mobile social network in an African context kind of just opens up a whole new path to people trying to help themselves but just that haven't had a way to do it before. What potential does the mobile revolution have in Africa generally and South Africa specifically? I think since 1994 um, when mobile technology arrived in South Africa it almost immediately started changing people's lives in the sense that for the first time for a huge amount of people they had the ability to kind of connect across boundaries um, meaning that if you didn't have a, a landline phone at home, you were pretty much kind of stuck when it came to communicating. Um, having a mobile in your hand, and mobile technology means technology that moves and allows you to move and chat. And that, I think, in itself is kind of life-changing. The idea of being able to communicate and connect without wires is in itself life-changing. I think what's happened since 1994 is it's gone way beyond what was originally envisaged with simple voice-to-voice -voice communication. Um, and particularly social networks like Mixit allow people to cross boundaries in ways that just weren't kind of imagined before. And that definitely is life changing. It's not just a question of being able to chat with your friends, it's a question of being able to build a business for yourself, um, to get yourself uh, educated, uh, to expand your horizons and your interests. I think we actually take very much for granted just how much this technology has changed our lives. And, on a daily basis, it is actually defining the way people live their lives in really interesting ways. Connecting people starts. Second thing is mobile payments. It's coming. Someone's they've already cracked the code in Kenya, you know, they're going to crack the code more and more all over Africa. And this is this is the next level that has to be uh, connected. You know, I mean, if you don't enable payments uh, in an African context, you you can never really get people to participate in the global economy. And I think there's a lot to be offered. I mean, you, if you travel a lot in Africa, you see that. People aren't lazy. Nobody's, nobody's like lazy. It's people are hungry. People are keen. People want to get ahead. They, just, they don't have the means. Now they have a mobile phone. They can see that. But they don't know, they don't know how to sell their goods or buy their goods. So you know, when, when that little piece of the jigsaw puzzle falls into place, I suspect it'll be because of the fact that we have some basic infrastructural problems in an African context that actually apply to most countries in the world and most people in the world. Those problems can be export. Those solutions can be exported, and I kind of that's where I kind of see it all going. You know, we're going to crack the codes for a lot of these big challenges here in Africa, and then once those things are sorted, we're going to take them overseas and we're going to take over the world. Do you think you'll be able to do banking then over Mixit? Oh, yeah, that's that's a given. I mean, we're actually working with a couple of banks already. We don't want to be a bank. I mean, I, uh, I think you know, particularly Mixit per se. You know, this is not a bank. We are not a bank. We're not an insurance company. We're not a music company. We're, I don't know what we are, to be honest, but I mean, I know we're not those things. So I don't want to make money that way, you know. The way Mixit makes money is it sells content. It sells, it sells games and music and wallpapers and chat room time and things like that, and it pays a revenue share on whatever it bills to whoever provided the content and keeps 30%. It's like a tax. It's like an income tax on the economy. We provide the infrastructure and we claim the tax and, and we, we make most of our money that way, which is quite cool. It's not advertising, right? So. Banks need to plug into these types of applications. I mean, it just makes it life easier for the user, right? I mean, you're sitting there, you're in your social application, you're chatting away, and you want to do a transfer, you want to pay for a good or something, you can just do it within there. And I think we'll uh, hopefully get some stuff off the ground this year where it's kind of game-changing stuff for the world, I think. But not trying to eat anybody's lunch. 
not trying to like clip the ticket from the bank's pocket or pile of money or get a carry on the float or anything like all the stuff that the banks make their money on that's fine let them make their money that's their business they're good at it i think we just want to make it as easy as possible for people to use their mobile phone in an african context it's almost as if the mobile phone was invented for the african continent um it kind of just proved to be the right technology at the right time for a continent in desperate need actually of that sort of communication technology. There's something like 650 million mobile phones in Africa. There's uh, approximately a billion people on the continent. And the possibilities really are simply that if you have a device in your hand that allows you to connect with people wherever you are and wherever they are, um, all sorts of things suddenly start opening up. For the smallest small businessman can kind of uh, run an enterprise. We see it in South Africa and on every street corner you have a, a little sign, a handyman can now advertise his business simply using a cell phone, um, he's not restricted anymore. Um, uh, an, another example, a guy who works as a golf caddy at a golf club can now directly uh, liaise with the golfer that he's caddying for. It cuts out the middleman in so many ways. It allows you to directly communicate with, uh, with people who can in some way kind of add value to your life, whether it's business, education, personal communication, or whatever it is. Um, South Africa, I think, maybe South Africa and Nigeria are kind of competing in this field, but in terms of use of cellular technology, South Africa seems to be um, a leader, an innovator. Um, is a, and I think there's been a couple of revolutions. The cellular technology revolution has been one on its own, but if you add the mobile internet to that, suddenly you have a cell phone device in your hand that allows you to connect with individuals, and you have a device that allows you to connect with the world. Um, and uh, this continent that's kind of always been seen as being a little isolated from the rest of the world has suddenly become a connected content, continent thanks to mobile. Please tell me more about Mixit. What future do you see for Africa's largest social network? Well, I actually see two futures. I mean, I see there's one future which I tried not to look at, which is like a mushroom cloud. <laughs> because <laughs> the truth is this is quite a competitive space, right? And whilst Mixit is, is definitely dominant in its, in its area and especially around being a handset agnostic mobile social network that works on feature phones which are still the vast majority of phones on the continent. Yeah, you know you can see where the movie's going you know, and you know if we don't get it right uh, in a couple of key areas it's not going to be a happy ending. But the one I see, the one I'm chasing and the reason we've taken so much risk and, and put so much on the line is where I think Mixit can be can be a, the, the biggest platform in Africa for Connecting people for to one another, for connecting entrepreneurs to people. So guys who want to create content, whether it's a little game or have their own music or quotes of the day or whatever it is, connect them to a market that they couldn't get to and get money from. Um, I think I think we'll probably make some big dents in the kind of payment space. I think there'll be some revolutionary stuff over there. I mean, I do think that the one thing, I mean, the one thing for the future, I hope, is that, you know, we must just remember that this is a great success story. I didn't build this thing. And this was like Herman Hiernes and Manus and all of these guys there at Mixit. I mean, these, are, these guys deserve like a medal. I mean, they're actually, it is incredible what they achieved. And it was a lot of hard work and passion. And, you know, that, I think just take a snapshot of time. That's why you need a book now. A snapshot of time, it's something to be proud of, it's an inspirational story for lots of people in Africa, so you can, it doesn't have to be somebody sitting in Silicon Valley with $100 million of capital. Um, but the fact that its DNA is good, it is like it wasn't started to hurt people, you know? It wasn't, it was started by people with kids, you know? That's who, that's who started, with daughters, you know? So it's, it's kind of a, it's a different DNA to a lot of the other things that are kind of happening out there. And, and if there's one thing that we can maybe show out of this is that you don't have to necessarily be, you know, you don't have to screw anybody along the way. You can hopefully kind of win the race by doing the right thing every time. How many people are using it? Well, we've got about 55 million or so registered around the world, but of that, it's about 25% is active. Um, the majority of people are sitting in South Africa, uh, but there, we're, there we have users in every single country on the continent. I think it's 52 or 53 countries. And outside of the continent, another 50 or so countries, I think 70 countries actually. So a lot of people are using it. I think, I mean, it is definitely more South African than anything else. Yeah, most people in the world don't actually have many screens. They actually, most people in the world only have one screen. 
And you know, that are their screeners, that, that's their life, you know. So when they're sitting trying to escape whatever they're in, you know, like they're sitting in public transport or they whatever, they you know, they're in their phone. And that's why Mix it is so damn engaged. I mean we do we can do like eight hundred million messages in one day. Eight hundred million messages. I mean F and B is a massive bank, does seven hundred million me transactions a month. We do more than that in a day. We do three times what Twitter does in a day. So it's you know, there might not be as many customers users as Twitter, but the type of person that uses something like Mixit has no other screen. So they're incredibly engaged. I mean, that's the power of this whole thing for me. How does it generate revenue? I think people all think the only way you make money in this business is you sell advertising, mm. which basically means you sell your customer. Now there's this, uh, I love this little motivational poster. You've got um, these two pigs in a barn. And the one pig saying to the other pig, yes, this barn's great, eh? Man, this is like free accommodation, people are so nice. Now the pig's like, yes, nice hay and the food's all free, this is great, man. And at the bottom is his Facebook. If you're not paying for the product, you are the product. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's the truth. And actually, when you look at the incentives that happen inside a business, when you start to chase like an advertising revenue model, as an example, you know, you're going to mess with people's privacy at the end of the day. I don't like that. Personally, as a user, I don't like that. Mm. I don't uh, think it's necessary, but, and I always thought it was not necessary, but I could never see an alternative to that, and then I saw this Mixit thing. I mean, Mixit makes 70% of its revenue. These guys, these geniuses, came up with a way of making money by selling content to lots of, lots of people, millions of people, in small micro bits, so people can afford it, like little chunks, like one cent. You know? And the accumulation of all those little micro transactions and stuff ends up in this big pile of cash that makes you like kind of independent of advertisers and brands and people who just want to like rape and abuse your customer base, you know? So that's the key. And in fact, it's one of the unique selling propositions and the biggest differentiator we have over a lot of the American companies trying to play in the space. We chase a different metric. We have a different incentive in size of the business. Um, whether it's going to pan out, whether, whether people in the world are more like the American markets turned out, which is they expect everything to be free and uncapped and as fast as possible. Well, we'll see. I don't think so. I think in Africa it's not like that. People don't have that expectation. People don't have that sense of entitlement. And people are happy to pay for things. But you're just going to make it easy for them to pay for it. What is your dream for Mixit? Look, I think, I think mobile technology, in a way, and Mixit in particular, they kind of, they have a dreamlike quality to them. I mean, things are happening in Africa that have the power to change the perception of what Africa is. Uh, Africa is very often seen as a, a dark continent, a basket case, a place of corruption and war and famine. Uh, what's happening there with technology and what's happening, what happened in Stellenbosch with, with Mixit has the power to kind of completely shift this perception uh, and to position Africa as a place where amazing things happen. Amazing things have happened in Africa for many years. I mean, this is the continent where the first heart transplant uh, took place. Um, so there's a lot of technological acumen here, there's a lot of innovation happening that we don't even actually know about. And I think Mixit to me kind of symbolizes that. It's uh, a bunch of guys, a bunch of computer techies in Stellenbosch at the bottom end of the continent came up with something that is allowing people to communicate in ways that they wouldn't have been able to before. And that to me is a dream that's being lived. The bigger dream I suppose would be for Mixit to become a global phenomenon just as Facebook is. And I don't see why that shouldn't happen because the numbers are already quite mind-boggling. Um, and it's just a question of momentum and of building on that. But uh, yeah, I think that dream is being lived and I don't see why, any reason why it shouldn't actually just get bigger and better. I'm still not sure what the dream is. There's like a, there's a something in my head and I know we're going in the right direction. Yeah. And it's a bit cloudy and every night I'm in the clouds part and I see where we're going. I know where Mixit's going. I think we mix it. I mean, I don't, I don't want to... Uh, Ten years from now, we've got to look back and say we tried. Okay? And what do we try to do? We try to help people build communities, digital communities. You know, whether it's the church, or whether it's a soccer club, or whether it's your family, whatever. You know, help people connect to their tribes, their communities. I think the other thing is I'd like to have said we try to help people make money. Not give people money, just give people a means of making money, honestly. And the last thing is I'd like to say I try to connect every single person in the world to one product. So that's kind of, for me, Something nice. I mean, I think the DNA of Mixit, hey, there's some cool stuff there. I mean, we've got some edges. We come from, uh, we come from people with kids, uh, people who have a different paradigm. It was, the birth of it was a good idea. It was like to help people. It wasn't to hurt people. Um, it was built for mobile. 
And people are only starting to realize now what that means. I mean, it is the future. It is everything, right? And it's different from the web. So, you know, built for mobile, you know, that's your basic underlying foundation. I think that's a big edge. Um, and there are a couple of guys out there who have been, who also started that way, but um, it wasn't Facebook. And funny enough, you know, on that, you know, that Facebook thing, the difference between a Mixit and a Facebook is the first community in Mixit, one of the high schools of Mitchell's Plain, the Cape Flats of Africa, one of the most poor, drug-riddled, gangster, dangerous, I mean, crazy places in the world, right? Facebook started in Harvard. We're starting at the bottom of the pyramid and we're working our way up. They're starting at the top and working their way backwards. You seem to be very optimistic about the future of South Africa and Africa generally. What fuels your optimism? Look, I mean, Africa is where humanity started. Uh, so the good and the bad started here. Um, in our country, actually, you know, is, is where humanity kind of had its birth. Uh, Africa is probably the most social continent on Earth. So when we talk about social networking and about people communicating and people getting on with each other, we're actually talking about a kind of social structure that began here in Africa. You know, we have a, we have a word to describe it that kind of is getting globally known, and that's kind of Ubuntu, the idea that you're not an individual in a vacuum, you're part of a bigger community, and what you do influences the lives of others, and other people can influence your lives. That's like kind of the positive ideal at the heart of the African continent. I think if there's any reason to be optimistic about humanity, uh, this is where it begins. And the reason to be optimistic is really based on the fact that we aren't simply individuals living in a vacuum. We have things in common with each other. We can fight and argue and debate with each other, but essentially we have common interests. Our common interests may be as simple as the survival of our species. But um, you know, technology allows us to kind of tap into this sense that we have something in common with each other. And that makes me personally feel hugely optimistic. As much as we may fight with each other uh, in a political sense, as much as we may kind of battle with each other in other senses, we have a very kind of common destiny. Uh, so the cell phone has become something much more than a tool for people to chat with each other. It's become a, simple, a symbol of the building of communities. And the fact that the cell phone has taken off in Africa to such a huge extent I think is symbolic of this need to build communities and the fact that we can and do build communities in Africa. I can't think of a bigger reason to be optimistic than the fact that we built the first communities in Africa and that we're building communities in Africa still. I've been lucky enough to travel a lot in my life and I've visited a lot of countries and I read a lot and the truth is I still haven't found any place better than where I live. And that's just the truth, I mean that's like a selfish thing, I'm easily living the best life in the world that I could be living. And uh, I don't want my kids to live here, and I think they will be able to live here. You know? And I, I think about that carefully, because you can't, when you have kids, you don't just think about yourself. You, know? you, you really start worrying about the future. There's some like, basic, obvious reasons why Africa's going to be fine. Like, the economies. We're coming off zero. <laughs> it's not like you know, we're in Japan, and we you know a little bit of backtracking to do for like another 100 years. Or Europe, where it's not looking like you're going to have upside. It's about managing downside. Like, this is not about managing downside. Africa is just about growth. It's, it's just it's a purely money. Just think about it in a money, financial way. It's like a no-brainer. I think this mobile thing is really, I mean, it's like is, it is the difference between trying to do things on this continent 20 years ago, 50 years ago. And you, I mean, it's, it's, it's not like a small thing. It's like an enormous bloody thing. It's like the biggest thing. It's literally lighting things up. It's completely changing the way things are going. And mainly because information is starting to flow, right? So information is more and more flowing. Governments becoming more accountable. You know, people are getting, you know, making better decisions. Markets are working better. It's just all kind of working. I mean, if I just look at all of those kind of waves and trends and stuff like that, I, 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 I'm left with this absolutely unshakable belief that 50 years from now, people will look back and say, do you remember when Africa was like a backward place? Can you believe that it was like that once, you know? And imagine being part of that tribe that was in Africa in those 10 years when it changed. I, I think we're living that, that, this is this decade. I feel like we're on this kind of road right now. I mean, it might not work, that's okay. But I certainly don't want to tell my kids that I wasn't part of that wave if it does happen.